Thank you all very much for such a well attended punch session today. Uh, my name is Katie and I'm from Resonance, which some of you may or may not have heard of. Um, there's a few of us here today from Resonance, mainly in this area here. Um, and we want it to be a really interactive session, so if you've got any questions as we go through, or afterwards, or during, just hand up, punch a Resonance person, shout out, design to be interactive. So, Today we've got our, the title of our panel session is quite a bold title, so we're going to talk to you about our feeling that the internet is broken. Um, I'm really focusing on user experience within that, so that's how we're going to be, uh, what we'll be talking about. And we'd like you to think of yourselves, obviously we're here in the guise of media panel, uh, think of yourself first and foremost as consumers, because that's what we all are, um, and we get a bit more out of it and thinking about it from a media planning angle. So first of all, just to start off with, to, to be very clear that we're not talking about breaking the internet in the way of a Kardashian breaking the internet, which was this photo a couple of years ago, which was slightly more exposed than this. Um, we're talking about not just one thing or one event that's breaking the internet, we're talking about a few different factors that combine together, which as a whole are detrimental to a consumer's user experience online. So to put this into an analogy, because we love an analogy, if you think about Soho Square down the road, there's now been created a path down the middle of Soho Square that wasn't ever intended to be there. And the first person to do that didn't think, they thought that they were being clever, and they thought that that wasn't going to leave much damage. But beyond that, everyone's followed suit, and that's now ruined probably a rock and a rock cities until some people stop doing that. So this is what we're talking about with the internet. Small things that fill a whole time that ultimately is detrimental to everyone's experience in life. So think about yourselves and your travels across the internet. Think about the worst examples of user experience that you've come across recently. And most of you will be thinking of user experience in terms of the design of the website. So how is it, how do you get around the website? Is it well signposted? But actually it's a lot more than good design and this is what we want to talk about. So for consistency, I'm going to pick on the Mail Online today as my publisher example. I'm sure none of you read the well first journalism of the Mail Online. But if you look at on this page, you've got skins, you've got a double NPU, you've got a pop-out video player, you've got an in-read video reader. Now all of those ads by themselves would have passed the IAB gold standard. All the standards of the IAB think that a good action had. And they would have been reviewed on a nice creative agency Mac computer without any other ads around them. It would have been a home three. But put them out into the wild. This consumer, when they came onto this site, they weren't there to, to look at ads, they were there to read the deep and meaningful journalism that the mail online had. <laughs> and actually, only 10 to 12% of this page is actually content. So that doesn't feel a very fair value exchange for the consumer who's coming to read something. So that, we don't feel that's a very good user experience for people coming onto the site. And it's not just the mail online, other publishers are available to have to them. So what about data theft? So that's another thing. So the Cambridge Analytica crisis, that's probably the jewel in the crown of the data theft of this year. There's a, there's a new one that emerged yesterday for Facebook. People don't realise that you're paying for these platforms with your data. Yes, there's now advertising on Instagram and Facebook, but ultimately you're paying with, with data because they're selling that on or have been selling that on to someone else. So people aren't clear that that is the transaction they're entering into and that is the way they're paying for the service of Facebook or Instagram. That feels a bit of a raw deal for consumers. We understand that in this room because we are marketeers, but the average Joe Bloggs on the street doesn't. So it's really important that people understand what they're basically using. The same thing with non-transparent influence. The best example of this was with Brexit, where people were being served systematic posts from seemingly trusted journalist, journalistic sources. Steadily over, over time, trying to persuade them that one view or another was right. So it actually affected what they went on to do at the, uh, in the voting box. And that's not great because you need to be able to make an impartial decision. You don't expect going on those platforms, but that's what your, your opinion is being influenced by. So again, people don't realise that this is happening, and that's what happened with the US election, that's what's happened with Brexit, and that's what the mess we've seen in recent weeks. Clickbait. So we all know that advertising, the, the general currency of uh, digital advertising is CPM. So publishers need as many page impressions as they can to sell as many impressions as they can to get the yield they need to stay afloat. So they need to make as many impressions as they can. So we've all seen this online, these sort of sensationalist headlines that crop up, uh, asking people or urging people to click to get a piece of content. But actually the reality, when you get onto the 
of the article itself doesn't live up to the expectation of the, of the headline. So people are confused, they're annoyed, and that's not a good user experience for the consumer. It's not good for the publisher, because they want people to sell on their sites as little as possible. But with Chartbeat, who's a company who put pixels down the side of a page, see that the average time that someone saves on a web page in the UK is 13 seconds, that's not enough to read a proper piece of editorial. So it's got to the expectation has got to match the reality. Sponsored content. So again, we're all agency people in here. We will have bought sponsored content at some point in our lives. So that the likes of using a trusted voice to talk about your brand for you, instead of shouting about your brand, get someone else to do it for you. Often looks like this. It's got a little sponsored button in the top left-hand corner. We all understand what that means. But to the average consumer on the street, do they actually know what that means beyond having a sponsored button? Do they even see it? So the big question is, is this just another version of fake news? where someone's using a trusted source to you know, get rid of their own opinion? Arguably, yes. So this is another thing where we don't think that the consumer experience is, is great. So it's more than what you think. So it's more than just a design, a good design of a site. Thinking about how you consume editorial, for example. A lot of people will be looking at that on your mobile phones. That takes some of your mobile data to load up a page. The latest stats are that 25% of a page load is for the content, which is what you've actually thought there to see, and 75% loading the advertising. So actually, a load of your data is being eaten up, whether you choose to or not, because that's how many ads and that's how heavy they are on the page, which doesn't feel very fair and fair value exchange for people. That ultimately abuses someone's time, because you know, it takes time for pages to load, it takes time to find the content you want to read. <coughs> With those sensationalist headlines, if you land on that content, it might not be the content that you wanted. So people's time is being wasted. And ultimately that abuses your money, because even if you don't pay for editorial or content, you ultimately are through the back door because you pay for your mobile data contract. So you're paying for that um, in one way or another. Fake news is another big thing. So we've seen the rise of this in the last few years where you've had, again, articles spring up that look like they're from a trusted source that are there to either completely tell a false story or tell a tainted story, um, or a tainted view of an existing story. And that, again, this is the problems we're seeing in America, this is the problems we're seeing with Brexit, uh, because this isn't controlled, and it is proliferated at scale on social networks, so quickly you can see how that gets out of control. So a really good example of that was with um, Yoko Ono, and a few years ago a big rumour started that Yoko Ono had an affair with Hillary Clinton in the 1970s. There was absolutely no truth to that, but that got out of control really, really quickly. Hello everybody! Good to see you. That pink up there accused me of harassment in the workplace. Me! <laughs> Crooked Hillary still hasn't released our emails. I don't know what it's coming to do. As you know, I've been a victim of fake emails. <laughs> this is all fake news. <laughs> I'm so you know. So we asked Mr. Trump to swim by to try to help us today. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to have a glass of blue. A bit of a fake news quiz. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let me erase. Fake news and they're from another source. So to do that, if you all wouldn't mind going to this URL on your phones, can you all see that? Okay, so you all got that. The game is Donald, that's me, okay? I'll say a quote and you guys vote on it whether it was real Donald or just fake news. I think you can grasp that. Okay. Let's go. Is it worth a laptop? Um, yeah. Question. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Okay.
<laughs> so I put my cap on now. <laughs> so basically what you should see as we go through as Mr. Trump takes us through, you should see a, a voting mechanism to vote A or B. Right, Mr. Trump. Okay, great. Ooh. So this is for you to you to spot the sort of crap the media enemies of the people try to claim I've said from the real world. Okay, let's go. First, you don't have to sue me to get my pants off. Yes, you do. <laughs> Right, is everyone voted? So most people seem to have gone for A there, I don't know why that's not the line, but it's not the line. Um, so Mr. Trump, would you like to reveal? Right. <laughs> 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 right. Try and get it right, it's not asking a lot, okay? Right. right, question number two. Mexican immigrants are bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They are rapists. They didn't sneak into this country to be your friends. <laughs> Which is why I'm going to build a great wall. And nobody builds walls better than me. Alright, is everyone voting? Everyone voting? Everyone voting? That was you, Mr. Trump. Mm. That was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel like I'm too busy writing history to read it. That was, of course, my great friend Ken, talented guy. Right, everyone's latest, we've got a bit of a mix there, so some have gone Trump, some have gone fake news. Fake news. Some have gone Trump, some have gone fake news. Right, the next one, Mr. Trump, is... You girls are going to like this one. <laughs> I am more honest, and my women are more beautiful. Like my daughter Ivanka, who, if she wasn't my daughter, I'd probably be that was the dominant one. Right. Yeah. Titanic. Yeah. One hundred years. Wow. <laughs> Global warming could have saved Titanic. Sad to say, but there was plenty of room on that door. <laughs> Fake news. That is fake news. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Next one. Sorry, losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel so stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. My two greatest assets have always been mental stability and being like really smart. <laughs> okay, right. what do you reckon? 68% of people that was the Donald. That was the Donald. <laughs> okay, next one. Right. Remember, new environmentally friendly light bulbs can cause cancer, so be careful. The idiots that came up with this stuff just don't care. Fake scientists. Sixty-eight percent of you are saying that that is fake news. That was the dollar. Vision rich. Listen to this. It's freezing and snowing in New York. We need global warming. This tank doesn't top itself. Well, this is close. 60% of you think that's the Donald? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, we go to the next one. Makes me so happy when the Miami housewives get along with each other. I'm such a sad. Watching finale, loads of laughs. Don't judge me on this. That was, of course, Lindsay Lohan. Deeply, deeply troubled women are always the best in bed. <laughs> That was fake news. That was fake news. <laughs> uh, the next one? Okay. The concept of shaken hands is absolutely terrible. And statistically, I've been proven right. Look at these hands. Are, are these small hands? <laughs> Well, this is a lot closer. So it's 52% of you took that fake news. That was Donald. That was Donald. Why? Yeah. I am the decider, and I know what's best. Jim. Not me, but it's true. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was not work, did it? Was it given up? Has the system given up online? I think it was the last one. But it's fake news for those that you've put the fake news. Right, so thank you very much, Mr. Trump, for that. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. <laughs> You are you, you free Saturday night? <laughs> 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 um, so, Mr. Trump, it's really, um, you care a lot that you're about the future of the internet and sustainability, so you're going to stick around and listen to me ramble sure, on for the next sure. 10 minutes. And then there's going to be photo opportunities for those of you who would like a photo of Mr. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> um, you will be hanging around. You're welcome to stay there, Mr. Trump. Make, make an orderly queue. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, that, I think that was just to demonstrate the point that fake news really has proliferated culture and society over the last few years, and it's doing quite a lot of damage. So if fake news is making money, so they're running adverts on, these, on this content, what about those that we can trust? What about those news outlets that we do actually trust and go to for our proper news? There are three core ways of paying for trusted journalism at the moment. So the first one is what we would call user donations, so the likes of The Guardian, you go on there and they are asking for people to part with their money and you don't have to do a set amount, it's what you can afford or want to give and that funds their open access journalism. The second one is a paywall, so that is where the likes of The Economist, The Financial Times, The Times, you are asked to pay a monthly subscription and you can access your content. And the last one is what we're all interested in, is advertising. So you're paying for people's attention through advertising, so that keeps the content open access. But why should we care whether these people make money? Why should we really give a damn? All companies are trying to make money. Why do we care specifically about these guys? Because they play a bigger, important role in society than just being editorial outlets. Particularly with investment journalism, they keep government held to account, society held to account. So a good example of this, some of you might have seen this film, Spotlight, which was out a few years ago. Uh, this was all about um, a team of journalists at the Boston Globe, ten journalists who took six months to write a story about you know, basically exposing um, child molestation in the Catholic Church in America. And without that, that would have either continued or been buried. So it's really important. These guys play a really important role in society. The next one was uh, something that's a bit more recent, was the Me Too campaign. So the New York Times and the Washington Post that uncovered Harvey Weinstein and what he was up to for many years across Hollywood. So even Hollywood isn't safe from the clutches of journalism. And it's really important that these guys are well funded so that we can expose things like this and keep societies, religions, whatever it is, held to account. Surely they do well, so let's take the mail online again. Last com score numbers for them are 30 million uniques a month. If this is what every web page looks like, surely they are making enough yield from that advertising to, to do well and to sustain themselves. Surely that, that's enough. To sort of pr prove this point, we're going to hop back to some nostalgia of mine and I'm sure a few of the rest of you in the room, which remember Bruce Forsyth's play cards right back, back in the day. But we're going to change it up a little bit and we're going to play your ARPU right. ARPU stands for Average Revenue Per User. 
every listed company has to report back on their RP every year. So how much money are they making per customer that they have? So to prove the point, RIP. <laughs> We've got a few well-known brands uh, here that can recognise and we'll play it like the game was designed to be played. So we'll take the first one, we'll give the average revenue per user the first one, and you need to guess whether the next one along is higher or lower than the previous one. So Vodafone is up first. They make £105 per user per year. Do Netflix make more or less per user? Less. Oh, uh, less. <laughs> Correct, they make £38 per user per year. Spotify, do they make more or less than Netflix? I'd say oh, no. Oh, 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 this one's more than Netflix. The Financial Times, they make more or less than, than Spotify? Higher. Oh, again, it's Netflix. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so they're behind the paper and they make enough money, enough revenue to sustain them that's a solid business model for them. Mail online. Lower, lower, much lower. Much higher. No, lower. Lower. Whoa. 52p. So you see that, with all those ads on that page and that's, that is the yield they're making. So it's really low. Facebook. Hi. 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 And then finally Snapchat. Lower. Lower. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so you see there that Mail Online is the, the most sort of easy access, most applicable journalism. It's 50p per online user. So that's nothing, relatively. And to put that in context to when they were at the peak of their print distribution, they made £250 per reader per year. So you can see that even though they've got more, more readers online, they can't monetize them in the same way because the yield they're getting from CPMs isn't high enough. So we can see that that's an, an issue and we think it needs to be better funded to keep them open access. And that's why so many publishers are going behind payment because they can't, they can't make money. So we, we would argue from all of this and Mr Trump's um, fake news quiz that the internet is broke, it's at breaking point. There are several things that are meaning that the internet isn't sustainable in its current form. I'm not going to do it, you're going to get two bits of sales from me and then that's, that's it. So we know that people won't use cash, we've seen that for some. Four years ago they went behind the paywall and they had to come back out from behind it within six months. It was £10 a month, you've got Spotify Premium and you've got Sky Sports Gold Highlights. That still wasn't enough to get, make people part of their cash. So people won't do it, we know that. And the CPM is unfit for purpose, but the yields that people are getting back aren't high enough, so we know that that's not sustainable. So something needs to happen. And we, as residents, we think it's really important that the internet is open access, because if you put everything behind a paywall, you're going to get people that can't pay for it or they won't pay for it. And it's really important, like we've seen with those films, those stories, that investigative journalism keeps people held to account. It's really important for society as a whole. But we reckon, we reckon we've got an answer to fix it, and we've been working actually with the UK government on this um, as, a, as a way to fix it. So we have something called a free wall. So it plays on that paywall name, apart from when you hit a paywall, you're asked to put your card details in and pay with your cash. We don't pay with cash, we, our, our currency is human attention. It's asking someone a question, getting them to respond to it. The question is from a brand, and your payment, you're answering that question, unlocks content for you for a month. So it's transparent, you know exactly what you're getting, there's no sort of data breaches, there's no clickbait, it's very open and transparent. So if you hit an article, two paragraphs in, like where a paywall would sit on a website, you are asked a question from a brand. It should take you three to five seconds to answer, we're not trying to trick people, and your article is released. So it sits in exactly that same place. It's frequency capped at once a month, so you're not going to get this on every article that you go on to on the independent. That is your value exchange. So that's what we're trying to do, and the yield that someone gets back from this. So if I gave you that 50p number before, if that's what they're making a year from CPM, we give them back 15p per engagement. So this monetizes them in a lot more efficiently than the CPM. So cost per engagement model for advertising. And because it's cost per engagement, you guys get 100% viewability. You get the mm -hmm. yeah. Rocking. You get 100% the ability, you get someone that has confirmed they've understood what your brand is trying to tell them, and you get the memory encoding that by answering a question that naturally comes with it. 
So we've done some research, I can send this so you can see it, but the memory encoding does mean that people remember it more than seeing it and not answering a question. We think that plays a really crucial role for society. We know that 99% of content in the UK is accessed without a cable, so only 1% of content goes behind a cable. We want to keep it that way. We think open access journalism, journalism is really important for society. And as I say, we've been working with the government uh, on the Care and Cost Review to look at how we can play a role in that. They're looking at other things as well. So like we pay a TV license, they're looking at something like a digital license where you might have to pay an annual sum in order to keep these journalists afloat and these papers afloat. And Resonance Free Wall has been put forward as the advertising solution to try and try and retain it. So, in summary, we think that the internet at the moment is breaking in different, those different ways, and we think that it's not just the design of a website that's important to user experience, it's everything. So it is content on the page, how many ads there are on the page, the load speeds of the page, how much of your mobile data is being used in that, etc. So, we think from start to finish your experience should be better, it should be cleaner, and what all you want to do is rebalance the, well, redress the balance that should exist between publishers, consumers, and advertisers to make everything so what we'll leave you with is when you next visit your favourite publisher, if you're going through your sports news, your entertainment news, your serious news, which world would you rather? Would you rather, on the left, have two paragraphs of your content and you hit a paywall and you're asked to get your credit card out? Or would you rather two paragraphs in, answer one question for a brand a month and, and move on and that's it? It's just something to leave you with. So thank you very much for listening. We believe that we are fixing the internet. Um, <laughs> And as I say, Mr. Trump is now going to stick around for any photo calls that you might want with him. So we're going to actually change his hat for him now. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Trump. So we've got made publishing great again. <laughs> <laughs> This is a big enough hat, I got a lot of Well, we can, we can, uh, we can extend. <laughs> Someone might need to hold his hair uh, up. But yeah, please feel free to come in and have your stuff. And if you use this hashtag, um, we're doing a few prizes, depending how virtuous you are, you can either win a few gym passes or a bottle of champagne, depending on your, your country. Um, thank you very much for listening, and yeah, any questions?